Don here in Florida, and we're back for part two of the gear reduction assembly that we're building out of a scrap yard starter. So let me show you a few things we've done. I went ahead and cleaned this up while you were all away, and uh, you can see these gears spin nicely in here now. So we're actually getting a overdrive when I go this way. It spins five times faster than what I'm turning. If I turn it the other way, it's one-fifth the speed on the output so what i noticed was this these gears actually inset somewhat into the ring gear and when i found a piece that i was going to use for the cap here i thought you know i'm going to have to turn this down so it insets and meets up near those gears so we don't have a lot of play for slopping those gears but what i did instead was this Remember the armature and magnet assembly that we took out and I threw the armature away? Well, what I did was I went ahead and I, I cut this cap off and we'll move that out of the way. And we're gonna come back to that in a minute because there's something I wanna show you about those. And what I realized was this cap already has that inset. So I wanted to take that off and we're gonna put it like that. And what we'll do is we'll sandwich it in like that that will take out any movement in those gears trying to move back and forth and this is just a scrap piece of cutoff I had and we're gonna turn this we're gonna put the bearing on the inside on this one on the Honda that I did over there we put the the bearing on the outside and put this cap over here to hold the bearing but this Mazda starter simplifies things quite a lot for me the, the Honda, for example, if you look here, I didn't have a way to put bolts down through, so I had to put Allen screws in like this to hold this cap in. Uh, it, it's just, this Honda starter was just a whole lot more complicated than this Mazda starter. And uh, we're gonna turn this all the way down, and we're gonna press fit this, we're gonna bore this, and we're gonna press fit this in place. Once this is press fit in place, we'll put a snap ring on here, and the snap ring will keep the shaft from moving out. This is the sun gear, and that would be free to pull out if we didn't have a way to hold it. So a snap ring, and I used a snap ring in the other one to hold that shaft as well, and it works just fine because what it will do is ride up against the inner surface of this bearing here and just turn with it, and that'll hold the shaft in place. And the bearing being on the inside, it has nowhere to escape to. So the snap ring basically holds the bearing from moving out this way because the shaft has no way to go in this direction. Keeps it from going out that way. So th this is a much, much simplified design over that other unit that I did. So since I've already got this pretty much cut to size, what I'll do is we'll take this and uh, size this to fit on there. Then we'll start with the shaft. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, let's see what we can do about this, getting this cleaned up. Hmm, just about perfect depth on this here. Point, let's see, one, one, four, five. All right, I gave myself a little extra to face that. So let's go ahead and face that. And that's why I like DROs. I think I need to bevel that edge just a little bit because that's rounded in here. So we're going to do that right now. That ought to be pretty close. Just like that. Yeah, you can practically screw it on there. All right, let's get a hole in this thing. There she goes. shaft that seems to go through there just fine so now we gotta go ahead and take uh, 74 thousandths out no 740 thousandths out at 430 deep for that bearing so let's go ahead and 
get that done. And this may take a little while. getting close enough that I want to uh, mic this because I want that bearing to slide in there with a little bit of pressure so let's go ahead and take a look at this okay I'm back I took that measurement looks like we got about 41 thousandths to come out of there so I'm gonna zero that and I got to sneak up on this Close. Okay, looks like we got uh, 19 thousandths to go. We're gonna go right there and see what happens. I guess that skim pass did it. We'll just check for depth here before I pop that bearing in there. Yep, that's it. There we go. I guess that's in there good. All right, let's move on over. Okay, I've set this up with the carrier housing and the middle plate that's going to do the inset there that, that's sandwiched in the middle and the aluminum bearing carrier that we just put the bearing into and I we're gonna have to screw these two parts together and the screw holes are right down through here so I wanted these together so I could get a real accurate shot so that when I go to put the screws in I'm not missing or, or having them offset just a little bit as a matter of fact I don't want this moving around on me at all when I'm doing this so we're gonna clamp that down There we go. So let's get that right there and right there. And then we'll take that out. And there's our parts. Get that. And you can see the points where I'm going to put my holes through. Okay, so we're going to start those holes and we want to make sure we center them good so we don't have much room on the edge here so I want to make sure I get a good center there's one there we go You want to force it. And this will be our clearance hole. So we'll get that centered. I'm going to turn that around so I can see it better. Yeah, see, I'm going to have to clearance that on the other side. I get done okay so this drill came through at a, this point here so I'm gonna have to contour this now and then put some reliefs in there 
to uh, allow the screws to fit down through there. So we're gonna do that right now. I wanna put some contour on this though to just make it look nice. probably finish that up on an arbor later okay so over here we need to uh, mill this boss flat I don't know if we can see on there but there's a boss right here that actually goes into the the engine or the transmission casing itself to keep this from moving every which way it keeps it centered that that has to come off of there to, to make this flat so we're gonna take that right off of there uh, my original thought was to do this on or with a the fly cutter, but there are clamping issues with this. Uh, you know, you have a case here that's basically open and it's not square. This case is not square, so it's very hard to get it in there. And a fly cutter is just really, really aggressive. Uh, when, it, when it grabs, it, it, it's going to take a long stroke and you're just not going to be able to handle that with with this so what we're going to do is we're going to put it in here and we're going to end mill it like this so i put this metal cap back in here basically to keep this case from bowing inward or or in aluminum's case it's not going to bow inward it's just going to plain snap so it's better to be safe than sorry with this so we're just going to tape that in place so it doesn't move and use that to keep everything steady. So uh, we'll go ahead and put it in here like uh, go this way first. And I could have probably made a fixture for this, uh, especially since we have tapped holes here and here, but yeah, I just don't want to take the time for that. This is just cleaning it up. All right, so let's try that and see what happens. And I don't have a 7 16th call up for some reason here. I open this up just a little bit to make life easier when we if we have to use that for a screw or something okay so we need to put some reliefs in here for the screw heads I went ahead and cleaned this up a little bit on the lathe and I just used a arbor an expanding arbor to do that with and then I just transferred the arbor into a collet block here and what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to find the hole centers here and that's pretty close I was messing around with this a second ago see it's coming off a little bit I got to bring it over and I mean the drill bits probably not the best way to do that a pin would be better but I don't have any pins here at the house this size there we go and we're going to use a 3 8 end mill here And we're just going to bring it down to the flat here. We're not going to sink it. So we're going to be real gentle about that. A 
Yeah, she's just starting to make contact there. And we'll find our hole. That's why I prefer a pin because the uh, drill bit is more susceptible to flexing. There we go, right there. That's close enough. And this 3 8 is probably a little on the big side, but the 5 16 that I have below it's just a tad too small for the heads of the screws. And she's just making contact right there. And that's it. So let's move on to the next operation. All right, this is the output shaft from the planetary set that goes out this way. And I'm not gonna size this because I decided I'm gonna do something a little bit different with this uh, planetary reduction. We'll talk about that later. But what I do wanna do is just take this gear off. And I bought these cheap uh, turning tools and I just wanted to see how that was gonna work on here. So let's go ahead and, and see what that'll do. Pulling back on me. Try that again. Too bad not too bad at all all right well the saw is cutting away over there we're gonna mark where we need to cut down to on this shaft because we're gonna take some of that out our our press on shaft is gonna go all the way down to this point so I want to get that marked out so I know where to stop on the lathe and I guess I can see that in red now so that's good so let's get on over there All right, so we're going to turn this we're going to take some of this off and we're going to turn this down to 0.4385. So, nope, it's going to go the other way. We're going to turn this down to 0.4385. All this has to come out. So, let's go ahead and wrap a little copper around that so it doesn't ding it when you're clamping. I want to get it in there tight. I don't want her moving on me. All right, it must be getting hot. I forgot to press play when I was taking those splines off. So we're gonna find out what we're at right now. Here. And that's, uh... okay, according to my calculations, we need to take off 11,000. So let's see what we can do there. Okay, 
So we're just a little bit over 0.4385. So let me polish that out just a little bit. And why do we want to do 0.4385? Well, because that's 10 thousandths over 7 16th. So I'm going to drill and ream to 4385. If I had missed this size, I could have taken it down to 7 16th. So we're going to go ahead and, and drill and, and uh, ream for 0.4385. If something gets screwed up, we can start over. We can go down to this size if necessary with a new shaft and turn this if we have to. I mean, we've got more options if we do it this way by leaving some metal on. So that's the way we're going. All right, what we're doing here, rather than uh, make a groove for a snap ring, we're just gonna leave a high point on here so that the bearing can ride up against that and that so this cannot push back out through so that would take the the place of an o-ring and just one less part to worry about Okay, before we uh, press that outer shaft onto the inner shaft that we just did, we're gonna go ahead and cut it off. We're gonna cut it off right there and clean up the end and then go press it on. So let's do that. We'll smooth that up a little bit because it's having a hard time starting. There we go. Okay, so we're back. Let me get this excess stuff out of the way. Uh, I went ahead and shortened up this uh, output shaft so it wouldn't uh, extend past that point there. And I put that back in. I'm, I'm not going to lubricate this as I'm putting it back together because as I was doing this project, I decided I'm going to utilize this in another project later in the year. And I'm going to take it back apart and uh, do some modifications. And I don't want to deal with the uh, lubricant everywhere I'll have to clean it up again so and we'll talk about that in just a second so uh, we got the ring gear in here so we'll drop this carrier back in and see how I shorten the shaft up so it comes down to that point and then we'll put our planet gears in like that and then remember the inset cover here that that butts up against those and this has two notches right there. They go right there at that point. So that'll go in right there like that. <clears throat> now, this here shaft, remember we we left this high point on here, and that's to ride up against that bearing right there. And this goes together a little bit tight. I can't even get that bearing back out. I'm, I'm not even going to try. So we'll just leave that there and put this in and then put that in to hold it. So we shortened up that sun gear, as you can see here and this point here will keep that from coming out so we'll drop that in and see it gives us just enough wiggle room there that everything's good now i'm gonna have to i don't know how i'm gonna get that on there it's, it won't push through but it goes on a little hard so all right take three let's try that again i had to go back and clean this up a little bit more to kind of get that bearing to start down over there better push it into place like that and i'm gonna make sure we lined it up yep we did and i've got these uh screws here from another project i'm going to use these instead
All right, and that just about covers it. So we've got everything loaded in here. We've got our input shaft and our output shaft, our cap with our bearing. And uh, as I turn it, you can see it turns real slow on the output. So that's a five to one reduction ratio. So now I've got this shaft, I can do what I want with it. I can, you know, put a flat in it. I could pin it if I wanted. I could, you know, put a keyway in here. Uh, now for now for a couple of my thoughts, uh, this could actually be milled right off of here. You could take that right off, and this could be opened up and and brought back right onto this point. So you could actually have an an input here and then an output coming off like this like a belt or something. You don't have to have it come off like this. So um, I have some projects that I've thought up for this winter and I don't want to do anything more with this uh, because I may use this on one of those, those projects and, and cutting this back and moving it back to here is actually one of my thoughts for one of the projects I have. That would shorten this up a lot. I mean, there's, there's not a lot there if you move the mounting point back to here. So, uh, I don't want to do anything with this output shaft now because I'm not sure what I'm going to use for an output later. So I'm just going to leave it that size for now. But uh, that's it. That's uh, basically how you do it. That's This here's my original. Um, like I said before, made with a Honda starter. This is a lot more complicated, a lot more screws and things to hold this together. Uh, basically, when all said and done, there's just two screws holding this together, that one and that one. And everything else just drops into place. So this Mazda, and Mazda's Ford, by the way, same thing. Uh, this is a lot simpler setup than this Honda. I would probably at this point never do this Honda again. Another thing you may want to take into consideration, if you did have a pulley coming off this direction, say if you move that back, you'd probably want to put in an additional uh, bearing block like this. You wouldn't want all your pressure riding on that little bushing. That's just meant to guide the shaft. So uh, there we have it. Okay, remember when I said uh, if you stick around to the end, I'll share something with you? Well, this is what I'm going to share. If you ever do one of these and you have the magnets left over in one of these rare earth magnet starters, these are great for magnetizing and demagnetizing stuff around your shop. <clears throat> this is a, another style. This was from a non-gear uh, reduction unit. And, of course, this was from the one we just did, the gear reduction unit. I've had dozens of these, and I usually keep the ones with the strongest magnets just throw the junkers away but the nice thing about these aside from not needing electricity to do what you want to do is you can do this let's say your drill bits piling up with uh, metal it's sticking on there as you're drilling and I don't have any magnetized drill bits right now but you can just take it wave it over like this try not to touch the magnets wave it over like this it'll demagnetize it same thing with this one just demagnetize it like that on the flip side if you want to magnetize a screwdriver or something just put it against the magnet, run it through a few times and it's magnetized. You want to demagnetize it, just run the screwdriver through the middle like that. Okay, that's about it. I hope some of you might have gotten some something out of this, something useful, something you can utilize for, for a project or something down the road. Uh, I have ideas that up the road for the speed reduction unit, but if anybody else has an idea, something they might like to see, go ahead and throw some comments in there. And I might take it into consideration. I'm, I'm always up for a new project. So, so I guess that just about covers it. As always, from Florida, Don out.